My name is Liam Hughes. I am the Chief Executive Officer and um, Co-Founder of Glasgow Distillery Company. The concept for Glasgow Distillery was um, established probably in 2011 when Mike and I were um, at a, a gin event um, in London. I had long harboured the thoughts of building a whiskey distillery um, and we combined the two because Mike's passion is very much about gin. Um, so we were at an event with, uh, with Sacred in London and we decided that we were going to combine our two passions and we were going to do it. So we formed the company in 2012. Um, I put together the business plan, raised the money and a Macker was launched in November 2014. I guess like most startup businesses, um, uh, in fact most businesses of course, it's all about money, it's all about cash. Um, we had a very solid and uh, um, compelling business plan, um, allied with gin and whiskey, it was a good combination, we were one of the um, first into the marketplace in terms of the new craft distilleries, um, so we had a lot of interest in terms of what we were doing. Um, but raising the amount of money that we raised is, is no small feat um, and managing the cash in the business. Um, as you can see in the background, we continue to invest um, in new equipment and in, in staff and um, in the facilities that we have here. So it really is the old adage, cash is king and it, it remains the, the, the number one priority in terms of how we manage the business on a day to day. At this moment in time, we have just finalised um, uh, an additional round of funding. So we've raised approximately six to seven million pounds um, to double the whisky production facilities, to um, enhance um, a, our facilities within the distillery. So you can see behind, we're building new office facilities. We're doing a lot of work externally. Um, and part of that funding as well is to, is to allow us with the launch of our whisky and to expanding our Macca range. Um, we also are working very hard in terms of bringing G52 vodka to the marketplace and we have a rum, um, which name I can't tell you just yet, but it will be revealed in the next couple of months and we're bringing that to the marketplace as well. So all in all, it's about taking Glasgow Distillery from when we launched Macker in November 2014 and we started laying down whiskey in 2015. Our aspiration grew very much to be a spirits business, not just be defined as a gin business or a whiskey business. And so that's what we're trying to do now is to basically round out our portfolio. To do that, we need to invest very heavily in terms of equipment. We've grown our staff numbers. We have um, eight distillers now, which for a business our size is a lot. Um, but we're laying down a lot of whiskey um, and, uh, and the expertise that we've brought in right across the distilling team allows us to be a lot more flexible in terms of the products that we make and allows us to, to, to really ensure that the quality of the products is continually at the forefront. I'm going to describe Macker in three words, but three words will be one word, um, and I'll explain why. I, right from the beginning, in terms of when we uh, conceived the mic in particular, we had a, a belief that, um, that gin should have one ingredient at the heart of it and that the other botanicals should then complement that. And if you look at the definition of gin, the word will be pretty obvious. So I would describe macro gin in three words as juniper, juniper and juniper. In terms of the development of macro, um, uh, as I said in the last question, Juniper was very, very much at the heart of how we wanted the gin to be. Um, and Mike in particular spent a lot of time um, playing around and looking at the botanicals that he felt would best complement the juniper. Um, always aiming that Macker would be at the premium end of the marketplace, um, both from the design of the liquid and the design of the bottle. Well, that was our aspiration from the beginning. So with juniper at the heart, the botanical very, very much are all based around complementing the juniper and allowing the different flavours to come through. So over the 12 month period that it took us to actually do that, um, we went through a whole raft of different botanicals. Some inevitably stayed and some left. 
um, one in particular that was right in with um, in the recipe right until we actually had Annie um, running because we developed the original gin on on a small much smaller scale on a much smaller still um, actually with the London Distillery Company um, and Darren Rook and his team at the time uh, but then when we took it through and we ran it through Annie um, it just orange didn't work so what we what, what had worked in in concept and worked in the lab when we then upsized it to, um, uh, to the final recipe, um, it just didn't make it, so we took orange out, and then the, uh, the, the resulting botanicals were the ones that actually worked best. And when we, when we do the run in Annie, um, right from day one, uh, it was really, everything again was about the quality, so when we ran the still the first few times, we couldn't get, quite get the quality in terms of the way that we wanted, so we just ran it slower and longer. Um, uh, and Bizarrely, and we use it in some of our marketing spiel, but it is actually true. The the the, the optimum point in ter in terms of time for running macker was seven hours. Um, so we have eight botanicals, junipers at the heart, and we had eight botanicals to complement that, and eventually we ended up with seven. And it takes seven hours to do it. And if you were had the time, which the distillers do, but if you are actually going through the run at different points of the run, you can actually taste different individual botanicals in that run. And that is um, why whenever we run it, we then leave it to, to basically marinate and to settle for uh, approximately two weeks as a minimum before we would consider bottling and sometimes a lot longer than that. What makes Macker unique? That's a great question. In a, in a world of um, almost on a daily basis, new gins coming out. Uh, I think, um, uh, and probably interesting for you guys to know, I think when we look back, when we launched Macker, which bizarrely is only four years ago, there were 200 gins in the UK. And I think we reckon there were about 2,000 gins in the entire world marketplace. Today, and I've lost count, and to be honest, we've stopped counting. The last time we did a count, there was close on 3,000 gins in the UK alone. So the explosion in terms of the numbers and how credible some of them are and everything is, a, is obviously a, a question of uh, for debate in, uh, in uh, right across the country. So what really makes Macro unique? I think when we started, we were um, not quite at the forefront, but we weren't far behind the Hendricks and the Sipsmiths. The beliefs that we had in terms of juniper being at the heart, as I previously said, and how we wanted the gin to, to basically be fantastic gin and tonic, first and foremost. I mean, I look at the numbers, what is it? Uh, eight out of 10 um, ways that gin is drunk will be in a gin and tonic. Um, but also we wanted Macker to be um, something that was a bartender's friend, that it was credible and uh, in cocktails and, and um, we try very hard to work with um, bartenders right across the spectrum um, and also then take their um, their um, inventions and the uh, and the cocktails that they make and pass those on to the consumers. So it's, it's very much about um, staying true to our principles and if you then look at the range extension so when we created Macker Oak and Macker Mulberry, in terms of the cask gins, the easy option for us was to basically throw chips in a cask and say it was a cask aids gin, but that would have not been true to actually what we set out to do at the beginning and it wouldn't be true to the, the, the um, and beliefs that we have as a business, as an individual. So we actually cost ourselves a lot of money and cost ourselves a lot of pain and heartache and continue to do so because we had mulberry and oak casks made um, a, and we went through a painful process of putting macker into those casks which cost a lot of money and then trying to find where the optimum level was, where the wood had actually intervened with the gin to, to a point. So at, um, at five weeks it was too little and we ran all the way through to 20 weeks where basically the wood had just overpowered the gin and that gin we couldn't use. So we came up and found that the optimum um, was say 10 or 12 weeks uh, and, and that's... So by, but by doing that, um, I, we believed that then we brought products to the marketplace that um, were true to us but also were something that we that the bartenders could then use and the consumers could identify with and, and they knew that it was 
what, we, what it said on the bottle was true. And if people come to the distillery and they see the videos that we make and all the rest, it is true. We do genuinely age our gin in casks for on average 12 weeks. Um, I, and and I, I think as we go forward in terms of, you know, we, you'll see we've just released the cherry. We could have just put cherry flavoring into it, but no, that would be much too simple for Mike to do that. And uh, um, in terms of giving Ian and the accountants um, headaches, um, he insisted that, no, we're not doing that. So uh, Macro Cherry is basically, we buy the best cherries we can get and we basically macerate them into macro gin um, and that can take up to two weeks and I do like cherries so it's great to see that you know, we've got to get them in the gin before the staff eat them all but we buy in great high quality cherries and we macerate and, uh, and marinate them in with it so again it's something that's being true to our principles of actually when we say it's cherry gin it is actually real cherries that have gone in to make it and I think that then comes through in the quality um, uh, and will then translate itself both to the consumers buying into what we're doing knowing that everything that has a macro name on it is is it is a standard mark of quality um, uh, and that the bartenders then can can work with our products and know that it is the best um, gin that they're actually one of the best gins that they can use in terms of cocktails that they're making um i think Probably only one word um, in terms of a, um, a secret to our success for Macker is, is the word of quality. Um, and I think if you look at the previous questions we've answered is that that permeates through everything that we've, we've done right from day one and continue to do. Um, I, I, he probably uh, wouldn't thank me for saying it, but it's true. I mean, Mike is um, pernickety beyond reason when it comes to quality sometimes. But that's actually a good sense check in terms of that and um, the pride in terms of the products that we make um, uh, the, from day one it's had his um, name and uh, beliefs sort of stamped all over it and and he refuses to compromise on that uh, sometimes it doesn't make commercial sense but actually it's a good sense check for us as a business that if it doesn't pass the mic test then it really probably shouldn't be going into the marketplace so so quality is is at the very heart of everything that we do and um, not just for Macker but with all of our other brands as well. I guess there's been many highlights um, if I can maybe just sort of split them into two um, uh, and, they're, and they're linked to, I guess to a certain degree I mean the first part is we have won more awards than I don't know possibly any other Scottish gin um, certainly over the last couple of years so to be recognized by your peers um, both in Scotland and in international um, events uh, across the world has been both humbling um, but also has, has been massively encouraging. Um, uh, so, so, so that has been a, a real highlight for us and continues to be so. I, I, I don't know how many awards we've won this year but it's definitely double figures already. Um, and hopefully there's some more to come at the Scottish Gin Awards on the 20th of September, we shall see. Um, the second part in terms of highlight I think has been again is the is the way that um, we have been support, supported by so many people, whether that is um, Scottish Enterprise, Scottish Development International, Scottish Government, um, a Scottish Gin Society, people like yourselves. Um, I, there, there's so many people that have um, encouraged us. Um, a been supported and ultimately um, the most important parts uh, in terms of the people that support us are the retailers whether that's on trade off trade and the people who drink our gin uh, so when for us when we go to events or when people come to the distilleries or we're out in bars and people are drinking our gin or we see them buying it at tastings you know there is a, a an element that you're going yeah we're, we're doing okay we're doing the right thing and i guess one of the uh, one of the biggest buzzes, I guess, is every time I go through Glasgow Airport when I see our Macker standing alongside Hendrix, Sip Smith's, the big boys gins, you know, it's like, okay, we're only a wee business, but, you know, the consumers like, enough, like us enough and people like World Duty Free support us enough and like the product enough and what we're doing to put us alongside um, internationally uh, um, renowned brands from big, big companies. So that's a buzz. 
There are some fantastic gins from every corner of the globe. Um, however, um, I think that in the same way as Scotch whiskey is held up as the Rolls Royce standard for whiskey across the world, although there are fantastic whiskies from other corners of the world, I think that Scottish gin um, is heading, if it isn't already there, in, in the same um, direction. Um, it, it could be a combination of the fact that we have fantastic distilleries already here, which of course have traditionally been whiskey um, orientated, and that skill set has transferred its cro itself across to the many gin distilleries that, that have sprung up. Um, is it our water? Um, the water that we have here, and certainly in Glasgow Distillery, our water comes from Loch Katrin. Um, it is of such a high standard, the water comes in here. When I first had it tested, they sent it back and said, can we have another sample to test it again? Um, and it was only because they didn't believe how good it was that it actually was genuine. They thought I'd sent them bottled water. Um, so we are um, incredibly blessed with the water that we have in Scotland. It's soft, which means it's really, really of, of a really high quality, not just for making whiskey, but for making all spirits and beers. Um, uh, and I guess probably a, an oft forgotten reason why Scottish gin is of, a, of such a high quality is we are incredibly fortunate that um, Harriet Watt is the best institution for brewing and distilling graduates in the world. So we have a constant influx of young, medium aged, older aged people who want to learn and know how to make or have already know how to make it, but they come in their further education. And here it was, is turning out a, a, fant a never ending flow of high quality individuals whose passion is, um, is about making fantastic spirits. And that has then just filtered itself out to all the new distilleries that have sprung up across Scotland. So we have um, high quality people, high quality ingredients and a fantastic tradition. So yeah, I think the mantle is well deserved and will be cemented over years to come that Scottish gin will um, be at the pinnacle and, and that's good news for all of the Scottish distilleries. For me that's a very easy one, the term Scottish gin is distilled in Scotland and bottled in Scotland, full stop. I believe that provenance is absolutely key um, to our customers, our consumers um, and to us as a business and also to the wider Scottish gin industry. Um, I think that we play around with provenance at our peril. So my belief is very fundamental that what it says in the bottle should be the truth um, and if it isn't the truth it shouldn't be on the bottle. I think um, a, a 10 year um, leap into the future is, a, is, a, is an interesting one in, in anybody's mind's eye. Um, in terms of Scottish gin I think the future is incredibly bright. Um, but equally, um, I think that the, the distilleries in Scotland and also um, uh, entities such as Scotland Food and Drink etc need to actually realise in the same way that some of the bigger companies have with, from a whisky perspective and protect what we have. Um, uh, if we don't then potentially we put at peril and jeopardy something that can be um, fundamentally as big and as profitable as Scotch whisky over time. Um, I, but if we allow people to tamper around with the edges in terms of uh, the quality or the provenance of the gins that are being made here, then um, you know, nobody would allow that to happen with Scotch whisky. So why on earth would we allow that to happen with Scotch gin? If we have something that is um, held in such a high regard on an international marketplace, then we should protect it in the same way as we would protect Scotch whisky. Um, if we do so, then I think the, the future is incredibly bright. If you look at the gin market overall, do I think there are? Do I think the gin market will still continue to grow? Um, yes, I do. Um, do I think that there are too many brands on the marketplace? Um, yes, I do. Do I think that they will all be there in 10 years? No, I don't. Um, do I believe that Macker will be one of the ones that are still there in 10 years time? 
Uh, yes, I do, and I and I believe that Macker and the other high quality brands, whether that's Pickering's, um, and uh, you know the. The list is endless, but the brands that are true to the principles that they set out at the beginning, that they are true to how they make their product, where they make their product, the story that they tell to their consumers, um, they will be the brands that prosper and that grow and that are still here in 10 years time. So in short, the future is incredibly bright, but the caveat is, is that we have to protect what we have and, in, and protect it in the same way as the Scotch whiskey industry protects Scotch. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, it's locked. Go ahead.